This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Join an engaging IT learning community with ACI Learning and IT Pro. Hey, congratulations to Don Pizet, IT Pro's co-founder and original edutainer, and the entire TechNATO team for their 300th podcast. Good going, guys. Get your standard or premium IT Pro membership by using the code TWIT30 at checkout for 30% off. Check out go.acilearning.com slash TWIT to learn more. Apple has snurfed up 90% of TSMC's three nanometer capacity for the year 2023. 90%. This is uh, according to Digitimes. So sorry, everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. This is, of course, the process that I the M3 would be based like, on. Who who got that 10? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, how did Apple, who, who got fired at Apple because they left anything on the table? Yeah. I, I love, I mean, the thing that we don't talk about, I think, enough just in general, not us in particular, but in general, is Apple scale. Like, mm -hmm. this is a game they've been playing for more than a decade now. Remember when they bought all the RAM yep. uh, <laughs> at, at a set price for the next, like, three years, and they bought all the capacity, and then everybody else is like, we need memory. And they're like, sorry, we sold it all to Apple for a price that's uh, way lower than you're, you would pay now anyway because they ordered it in advance. This is Apple, like the scale of the iPhone, especially the uh, money that Apple has to spend, uh, the money they've got in the bank so that they can spend billions of dollars now for you to build that factory for the yeah. chip that they're designing that you're going to need to fab in four years, right? Like all of this is the... I, I don't want to say it's the Tim Cook secret sauce, but it kind of is, right? Like they, they have so much market power and so much money that they can define what's available and then take most of it for themselves. And it's yeah. one of the reasons that the Apple Silicon story is so powerful is that they have yeah. that scale. And, and another reason, it's another reason why Apple is so valuable in their culture that they make plans, they can make long distance plans, and they know what they're going to go after, and then they can execute on those plans. It's not a, well, maybe we'll try this, or maybe we'll do this as an experiment. It's like, no, they, if, if they're, the fact that they're doing a uh, VR goggles means that they know where it's going to be in five years and what they intend to ship in five years. The fact that they need to book all this, they can uh, commit all of this money towards three nanometer manufacturing means that they know exactly what the roadmap is not just for this apple silicon but the device is going to go into for the next several years and that's not something that it does, it's not unfair at all that they book this they book this all out they've got the money and they're making the commitment other companies they just for for a lot of reasons they don't have enough control over their market to be able to say this is what we're going to be we're going to be doing in three years they can say this is what we hope we're going to be able to do, be doing in three years it depends on how the market responds to the next two years of stuff that we planned three years ago yeah there's a there's a uh, this is my, one of my favorite sayings is from omar general omar bradley that you know amateurs <laughs> talk about strategy and professionals talk about logistics and yeah. apple is a master of logistics yep that, that and that, that's the you know that's what we see here and andy andy makes the point too this has shifted into a higher gear now with apple silicon because apple yeah. designs their chips so they know exactly it used to be they took stuff off the shelf, right? Like right. they took an Intel part from here and whatever Intel made it, they could choose what Intel part they wanted, but they were choosing based on Intel's choices about what goes into chip A and chip B and chip C. And well, now not only, and they were privy to some of Intel's roadmap, right? But now it's like they make the roadmap and not only do they know what the chip is going to be, but as Andy said, they know exactly what computers it's going to be in, right? right? Like they know that going in three years in advance. And as you see all those chips slowly unify, you know, where there's, you know, we're, we're coming together where they're making the same type of chip uh, or this and eventually maybe even the same chip, you know, in, in some cases, the same chip uh, across all of the platforms. It, it gives it just an entirely different scale than it had in the past. So the iPhone, what is this? The, I'm getting the numbers are all confusing. 14 Pro Max has the A15 chip. Is that right? I'm so confused. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm glad it's not just me. I thought I was yeah. having cognitive difficulties. Okay. <laughs> the numbers are confusing. But the it's next the generation... Six, the 14 Pro has the A16. 16. The 15 yes. is in the 14 nothing. 
Uh, and so the next one, the 15, will have the 17. <laughs> Which is the and 17, iOS. is, is the 17 is, yeah. a three nanometer? No, I know the 16 is not, right? No, they're, they're, they're not. They're, it's their enhanced five nanometer. Okay. It's not the real three nanometer process. This new wave is going to be the three nanometer process. And that will be way, iPhone 15 this fall. Running an A17 and iOS 18. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. And then, but also, so Mark Gurman says, and we, I was all, I was really hoping because there were rumors floating around and I hate rumors, but there were rumors floating around that maybe this 15 inch MacBook Air that Apple's supposedly going to announce in a couple of weeks at the WWDC would have an M3. Now Gurman's saying, no, no, the first M3s may launch by the end of the year. Yeah, he says that, although that story, his story is peculiar because he's really just talking about um, notes about the configurations in an M3 Pro chip and then extrapolating. And I don't know if the M3 Pro can really be attached to the M3, right? Presumably the M3 will come earlier. So when he talks about the M3s at the end of the year in a story where it's all about the M3 Pro being ah. spotted by some third-party app developers, I'm not sure he actually means the M3 as a whole product line by the end of the year or if he means the M3 Pro itself that he's writing about by the end of the year. And he leaves it kind of unclear himself, which... Mark's a pro. I suspect that means that he he's not sure and he's not going to say anything, claim anything that he doesn't uh, know for sure. So it may be the M3 could come sooner. Remember, the M2 MacBook Air came last summer. So an M3 MacBook Air and One iMac in the fall is, yeah, it, 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 yeah. yeah. Or, or, or 18 months later is not yeah. unreasonable. Yeah. But um, his detail here is about spotting a, an M3 Pro in the wild. The company has begun, this is a quote from his uh, Power On newsletter, the company has begun putting next-generation Macs with the M3 chips through their paces, testing them with third-party apps to ensure compatibility with its software ecosystem. That you know, that's pretty close to a release, I would imagine. Maybe not. Um, he does double down on the fact that the uh, the 15-inch will have an M2 chip in it. Um, yeah, I, I do think it's interesting. The only the only news from the street that I've seen is that Costco is selling an enormous number of uh, Studios and Mac Minis yeah. for. <laughs> Very discounted prices. Yeah, the discounts and also uh, M1s. Uh, the M1 Mac. The M1 Mac was selling for like two ninety nine or something. Yeah. Two ninety nine or three ninety nine yeah. at Costco, and the studio was selling the base studio or whatever was selling for fourteen ninety nine, less than the Mac Mini Pro <laughs> at Costco. Um, and uh, it just feels like the timing is odd. You know, yeah. given we're before WWDC because it's not it's not the kind of machine we're expecting, but it just does seem like they're dumping a lot of hardware out yeah yeah I mean, it's it's not a it's not the same message right I, I i would not be surprised if they announced that macbook air next tuesday i would not be surprised if they announced it in late june right like <laughs> they, they it, it really could be anything like, you want it right. could it because it's because it's an a, a, it's a nice idea i think it would sell really well but is it part of the message of WWDC? It is not, right? right? Like, it's not that same message. So you could give it its own little stage some other time. So maybe they will. I mean, Do it, we it could expect be, they'll have announcements every Tuesday weeks. from now till uh, WWDC? We're going to hear some little tidbits. This is all this stuff. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So, so well, they're, there's they're three probably weeks sitting in rehearsal. They're probably in rehearsal going, yeah, let's cut that out. And yeah. then it comes to a Tuesday. <laughs> they're refi so refining it now. Release. Let's make that a Tuesday. Yeah. Release. So the 22nd and the 29th, <laughs> some stuff will leak out. And then June 5th, of course, is WWDC. That's a Monday, which is unusual, isn't it? Uh, for Is it, it uh, normally they do? No, not for WWDC. Not for WWDC. That's, WWDC. A Monday That's normally a Monday yeah. through Friday. Okay.